Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck from East Earl, Pennsylvania, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. morning everybody another Tuesday is here how do we know it's Tuesday because the way it is because the way the Sun is shining that's how it's Tuesday who decided like what day would be Monday like the very first Monday I guess the first day of the week is Sunday okay so the very first Sunday the calendar actually has like a meaning doesn't it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But who was like, okay, today will be the beginning of all time recorded in this way. You know, because we're in the year 2022 right now, but it's not the actual year 2022. People have been around for thousands of years before that. So really it's like the year, like, who knows? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be careful with my boots when I get in here, see? Boots. Oh, I just shined this. That, that's not scratched. No. What in the world? Ah, uh, it comes off. Really? I just cleaned this. I gotta be careful when you when I get in here that my boots don't touch the snow. Well, I gotta shine it up a little bit more yet. I want it to be more of a mirror, but and then I want to do this as well. Clean this off. Get that just to shine. I want to do this headache rack. Get that shining shined up as well we'll get this shined up here i'm pretty sure we can shine that up for this in here i'm not too sure what i'm gonna do because it's all kind of like rusted up here we'll think about that i don't know if it'd be best to uh grind it down so it's polished or to paint it or just leave it this color i'll just leave it uh, for now <laughs> I'll just focus on shining up what I can shine. That's my model, right? If it can shine, it should shine. And it will shine. Somebody's not been very nice to this truck though. Like, this truck has not been taken care of in the past at all. There's a big dent in there. And on the other side, uh, that one hasn't been uh, polished yet, but you can see already it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb when I do polish it, because right here there's a big repair job on it. And down there, there's a big dent. So it's an old truck, and it's been like a, a beater truck. And I'm trying to, trying to bring her back to life a little bit here in my free time. We're finally getting the weather we deserve this week after this brutal winter and spring. Really hope we have a really good summer just to make up for it all but the water levels are going down things are drying up a bit the sun is shining the truck is shining a little bit more happy days Britt and I also went and bought bicycles this last weekend pretty excited to uh, get on those we're actually going on a bike ride today after work our first one together well we had a preliminary test ride together around the block but uh, we're going on our first bike ride today we just got a couple of cruiser bicycles. She wanted a cruiser one, she's got like a pink one, got the fenders. I got a, a it's hard to tell what color it is. It's sort of like a, what was that, dark white greenish tone? Oh, what's this guy doing? What's this guy doing? Oh, he's got a flat tire, does he? Got something coming up here beside me. Why does this guy slow down? That's, that's a pet peeve of mine. Why did he slow down? If he would have just kept up his speed limit, I could have moved over and given that guy more space. But instead, he came up right beside me and then stayed right beside me as I slowed down. Rawr! But anyways, yeah, mine's like a... You'll have to see the color. I like it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a cruiser bike, you know. Got the fenders on it. It's like a, it's a nice cruiser. I just wanted it to relax. We're not mountain bikers or anything. We just want to go for some relaxing bike rides. 
something to get active, you know. And I didn't want a bike that would uh, you know, get my back all dirty when we ride through the over the wet pavement or something. You'll see it. I like it. That's all that matters. What is that coming up beside me? What is this? Peak 589, right? It's 589? 585? 5 something. That's a high top sleeper. That's got a lot of space inside. That's nice. That is nice. You may return to your lane, sir. All clear. No, doesn't want to. Okay. That seems to be a thing of the past out here. During the daytime, you can flash your brights at someone to let them know that it's safe to move back into the lane. At nighttime, however, you guys that have been watching me long enough know exactly what I'm going to say right now. At nighttime, do not use your high beams because trucks nowadays, the, the high beams that are on there, those LED lights and halogen lights and everything, they're so bright that they actually blind the driver in front of you who's looking in his mirror. He's looking straight at your truck and you blind him with your high beams. Very rude in my opinion. Fair, I hate it when that happens. So you can dim your lights or turn your lights off and then back on, sh like just real short, just to let them know that it's safe to come back in if you want to help out. I know it's a courteous thing to do, but really, my own opinion for me personally, I'd rather people just not do anything. I mean, I got myself into that lane, I can get myself back into this lane, but I know some guys are just trying to help out. It's just when you flash your high beams in my mirror at nighttime, it just ticks me off. That's all it does. It just makes me upset because it, it hurts my eyes. That's another freebie from Trucker Garage. You're getting a whole bunch of freebies on this channel. I'm going to have to start charging you guys. <laughs> well, I've showed you guys this driver tank and believe me, it's not finished yet. I can keep going. I can keep going to get that into more of a mirror finish get that reflection so you can see my face and recognize me in that tank from here. But it's better. It's better than it was, a lot better. I'm gonna show you the other tank here. Okay, so I've got the first, what I call it, a first coat. You can see me in the bottom there now. We can do better though. A lot better already though. A little bit more work to do on the back, but compared to how it used to be, amazing, right? Up here, it's uh, I got it to quite a good mirror finish. You can see me there and almost recognize my face. You see that? On the top of the tank there, but uh, the whole tank can get to that point yet. And then once the tanks are at that point, then we move on to these. And these can shine. Not quite like a mirror, like a tank, but uh, these can shine just the same. And then we get to the headache rack after that. So I do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit every day. So now both tanks are uh, at least got the first, first once over, you know? Diesel, you're doing the second one, okay? You're polishing next. Okay, you're on polishing duty because you're a lord now. Officially, you're a landowner, my friend. You can polish my truck. Sounds like a deal to me. Hey, Frank, this way, in the yard. Guys, these guys, if you don't watch them, they want to pee and poo all over my furniture in the front there. That's not allowed. My furniture, if anyone's going to pee on it, it's going to be me. Yeah, I'm not sure if you watched yesterday's video or not. I encourage you to go watch yesterday's video. Uh, we make a new video every day. Uh, yesterday's video, Diesel got a gift from uh, Scotland. He is now an official landowner. He is now officially Lord Diesel of Glencoe. He owns a square foot of land in Scotland. <laughs> no jokes. My dog's a landowner. I went to go look at a truck today. Kenworth W900. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, I like the owner too. Uh, I mostly I wanted to meet uh, the owner of the truck to meet the owner as much as I wanted to see the truck. 
he had every single detail of that truck ready and on hand. Every maintenance detail, every service, every fill up even. Since he owned since he owned the truck, he'd been keeping track of every single fill up, all of his fuel economy, every single fill up. Details. He's been keeping track of everything. He knew that truck inside and out. It's been well taken care of. Uh, I won't go too much into it now, just in case I don't get it. Just looking around right now and uh, seeing what my options are, really. That is my best option right now. With the market the way it is, uh, trucks are very expensive at the moment. And uh, I'm trying to decide whether or not they're ever going to come down. I know that once the new truck market gets back into swing and new trucks come off the production line faster, it'll make the used truck market go down. I don't know how far down. Prices usually don't go down. They usually go up or stay steady. That's to protect people's investments because now if people spend, let's say, like $80,000 into a truck, they buy it and six months down the road, well, now the market says it's only worth 65000 Well, there's going to be a lot of angry people and a lot of angry banks because the banks have now loaned out this money for this truck that's now not worth anything near what they borrowed. Now, it's a serious liability. So I don't think the banks would be lending out money if there was a an expected sharp decrease in the value of trucks. They just wouldn't be lending out money right now. They'd be like, no, I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that? Right? So there's inflation to deal with. There's just everything going up in value. So weighing all the options, checking things out and see where it goes from here. I don't know what my next steps would be, but well, I know what my next steps are, but uh, uh, we'll wait to share anything and if anything happens. If you don't hear anything from me and, I, and nothing happened of it and I'm just going to go on doing what I'm doing, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing right now too. And I don't really want to give up my position because I got a really good position. And jumping into my own truck means that I'd be on um, regional fleet, so I'd be gone. I'd be home every weekend and home during the week once. And that's sort of what I was hoping for, is what I would like. The job I'm doing right now is great. I love being home every night, but uh, something about the highway, you know? You just want to get out there. We'll see. We'll see. No big decisions. Just filling you guys in and what's going through my mind. Sort of suddenly I were to jump at something, you're not like, whoa, didn't see that coming. No, you saw it coming. I talked to you about it. You know I'm looking around at trucks. You know I'm looking in the market. Anyways, that's that. You getting hungry, Chevy? Oh, you getting hungry? Tell me, how hungry? How hungry are you? Speak. You're smiling, are you smiling? You're that hungry? Diesel, tell me how hungry you are. Somebody, tell me, say something. <coughs> Howl. No, howl for me. Thank you. I get it. I think you're hungry. Let's get you some food. <laughs> the main reason. I like being home. Family. The wife's not home right now. She's the main reason. Being home every night is really good. That's why I'm very hesitant to give up this position. Very hesitant. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. But there's a part of me in, in here. There's a part of me that just yearns for the open road. And I think being home once a week, plus on the weekends, I think that'd be pretty good. I think I'd get a lot of home time out of that. But we'll see. I was waiting until all the IVF stuff was over. Well, you guys want an update on the IVF too, don't you? I have nothing to update you with. There's your update. No updates. June, I think, is going to be our first transfer uh, from what I hear here now. So June, and we got two shots. There's, did I tell you that? There's two blast assists that made it. So we have two shots. June and July. Hopefully June takes. And, uh, yeah. 
that's why I'll be staying close to home even if I do get a, a highway unit uh, just regional home as much as I can uh, but you know still get that highway bug out of me right and I really do want my kids to experience what I experienced and going on the road with dad you know hard to do that when you're just doing city stuff all the time not as fun I don't know I don't know. no big moves all talk right now we're all it's just talk talk and dreams hopes and dreams and if that's what they stay I'm okay with that I'm okay with that I like being home just went on a little scoot Scoot a boot town. Scoot a boot. On our new bicycles. I'll show you Bert's bike first. She's very excited about it. Her name is Barbie. Is it? Yeah. Barbie. Because she's pink and white with purple stickers. Very nice. So we wanted cruiser bikes. And uh, this is the bike that I got for myself. I'm an old man now, so I wanted the fenders keep my back clean when we ride through the puddles and stuff no mud up your butt yeah and it's uh this is a raleigh uh misty comfort i think yeah misty comfort ride and that is a super cycle camellia got him a canadian barbie aka barbie, barbie. got him a canadian tire so my first time riding in 20 years she did great give or take yeah and they are very comfortable. That's why we wanted to get uh, this style of bike, because I'm not going to be popping wheelies all over the place. I'm an old man now. Absolutely. Had a blast. Yeah. Felt like a kid again. <laughs> it was just like riding a bike. Came right back to me. Exactly. Didn't wipe out once. Nope. I was talking about me. I didn't even wipe out once. She's, <laughs> she's a pro. I don't know. You were behind me half the time, so you might have. And well, not told me. on purpose. <laughs> just uh he was looking at my butt we got the speeds on here two gears seven gears on this one is there just six on yours oh i got an extra gear maybe that's why mine was a little more expensive seven speed and six speed a lot of these comfort cruisers they only come with one gear i noticed and i thought that that might be hard when we're going up hills and stuff mm -hmm. and we're just you know want to leisurely cruise along but also, i don't want to be straining uphill i wanted hand brakes because oh, pedaling yeah. backwards you just like come to a jolting stop and then your back hurts that's right and yeah we're old ones. now so mm -hmm. <laughs> all right very happy with them anyways very oh, happy yeah. with them i love it i like it it's gonna keep us busy all summer look at that cyclist over there hard. cyclist hardcore indeed by the way, I wanted to show the vlog. Uh, Diesel. Where did I put it? I put it somewhere safe. Is it here? I don't know. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about already. Diesel is now a lord. A real lord. I put it somewhere safe. Ah, it's in. Here it is. Highland titles. Diesel. Diesel, hey, no, 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 no. You can tell mom in a bit. Mom, guess what? Diesel, come here, sit. I present you with this. You are now officially, legally, a lord. Lord Diesel of Glencoe. You own a square foot of land in Scotland. I know, right? We're gonna have to go visit it one day. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, we own a plot. It's a nature preserve. So the way they preserve it is they sell the entire like forest off one square foot at a time. There's like 35,000 people that own one square foot of land. And uh, by owning land in Scotland, that makes you a legal lord, laird, or lady. Laird is the Scottish version of Lord. Lord is the English version. So he could be Laird Diesel. Right. Lord Diesel Weasel. He owns some land. <laughs> Landowner. Landowner Weasel. Lord of Glencoe. That's the title. Oh, he's even got a card right here. I think that's a card. Uh, I don't know if I can show this to you or not, but 
I don't know if there's any private stuff on here or not. But... It says, Lord Diesel Weasel Giesbrecht is the owner of land in Glencoe Wood. Diesel Weasel Giesbrecht may now assume the title of Lord of Glencoe. Then it gives us our plot number here and we can actually like Google it and like GPS it and go visit our uh, Diesel's plot of land. He owns land. <laughs> they grow up so quickly. <laughs>